Former CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield and other witnesses testified on the origins of COVID-19 before the House Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic today, where Dr. Redfield maintains his belief that the pandemic most likely was the result of a lab leak, and he called for a moratorium on gain-of-function research. Let's watch some of that. Based on my initial analysis of the data, I came to believe, and I still believe today, that it indicates that COVID-19 more likely was the result of an accidental lab leak than a result of a natural spillover event. It's my opinion that we should call for a moratorium on gain-of-function research until we have a broader debate. And on the benefits uh, or risks of gain-of-function research, Redfield said this. So one, one other path of questioning for you, Dr. Redfield. Proponents of this research claim it may result in vaccines or maybe even stop a pandemic. Dr. Redfield, has gain of function created any life-saving vaccines or therapeutics to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. Has gain of function stopped a pandemic to, in your opinion? No, on the contrary, I think it probably caused the greatest pandemic our world has seen. Do you find any tangible benefits uh, to gain-of-function research at this time? I personally don't, but I do want to stress, I think the men and women that support it are people of good faith because they truly believe it's going to lead to a potential benefit. I disagree with that assessment. Mm -hmm. Now, it's worth noting that this hearing is ongoing, and Dr. Redfield also uh, testified about being excluded um, from cause, uh, calls investigating the origin of COVID. And when asked, why do you think you were excluded from those calls? He replied, because it was told to me that they wanted a single narrative and that I obviously had a different point of view. Just to emphasize, uh, in, in, in early to mid-January, I did have multiple calls with Fauci, Farrar, and, and, and Tedros about how important I thought it was that science get engaged in, in aggressive, aggressively pursuing both hypotheses. I also expressed as a clinical virologist that I felt it was um, not scientifically plausible that this virus went from a bat to humans and became one of the most infectious viruses that we have for humans. That is really alarming stuff. You know, this guy is, he was head of the CDC. He's a government scientific expert, um, which goes to show that this idea that we just have to trust the science and trust the experts that was pushed on us by uh, mainstream people, talking heads, is, is very fraught because there is disagreement. There was tremendous internal disagreement. There was initially disagreement yeah. on whether this was more likely to have come from a lab. And then kind of everybody fell in line. There was a little bit of soft pressure. Dr. Fauci asked for that paper arguing for an animal spillover event. And then he really at press conferences and subsequently tamped down on speculation that it would have been the thing that impugns our government funding priorities. And, uh, and, and, you know, you, again, I've, how many times have I said this in the last two weeks, but you were derided as a racist conspiracy theorist for thinking otherwise. Yeah. It, it's odd because I, I could see it, we eventually got there, right? And the fact of not really endorsing uh, lab leak theory into the 11th hour hasn't quieted people's concerns that it could be lab leak theory. And now we're getting these kind of endorsements from government agencies that it might be the case and the doors swung freely open. So the advantage of that, if you are kind of self-interested and wanting to avoid liability and cover up responsibility here, is that, okay, you push it off three, two, you know, three years, evidence is gone, and now we can talk about it safely without there being any real possibility of getting into the details. But excluding that very nefarious kind of uh, arch villain perspective on what might have happened here, it seems like such a wasted opportunity because we could have run this to the ground years ago. It, it, it is likely that we will never actually have a definitive answer, but by precluding discussion about what out, you know, what causes could exist, it really drew out this conversation and invested it with more significance, I think, to regular people who, you know, aren't going to be liable, aren't going to be affected by whether or not gain of function research uh, pers per persists because they're not scientists, they're not really in this arena. Now suddenly ordinary people are very, very invested in this because it, it, it feels like and frankly is a kind of media conspiracy, government conspiracy to and suppress information. And I, I, I'm blown away that they did it because so many are admitting, well, I, I didn't want to give this theory any daylight because, yeah. because of Trump because they thought that they had like galaxy brain this into being like, I'm endorsing Trump or I'm, I'm promoting Trumpism. 
if I say this. Jamie Raskin, uh, Representative Jamie Raskin, was actually trying to disentangle these things, these two things at this hearing. Um, I don't know if we can play any of that. Whatever the origins of COVID-19, whether it is bats or bureaucrats, no finding will ever exonerate or rehabilitate Donald Trump for his lethal recklessness in mismanaging the crisis in America, which cost us more than a million lives. Indeed, if COVID was actually the product of a lab leak or the worst bioweapon of mass destruction ever invented, as some have argued, and obviously we don't have the scientific evidence to say any of this yet, it would not only not remove Donald Trump's culpability, it would only deepen his culpability in the most profound way. So what he's, he, what he's trying to do there is say, well, may, okay, maybe it's a lab leak, but remember, Trump, so if it's a lab leak, the Chinese government screwed up, and, and who got the approval? Who, who, who gave their approval to the Chinese government? Donald Trump, I rest my case. So then he, he's like giving cover. It's okay yeah. to think it's the lab leak and you can still dislike Trump because look at all the times Trump said positive things about, it's, it's like, okay, I guess that's helpful. You can give permission people to explore this theory because it's, it's not, it doesn't make you pro-Trump to think it. So I guess, I guess that's actually doing good work. It's, it's <laughs> wild that you have to, that you have to walk yeah. Like the liberal media through it, like, no, it's, it's, okay. Trump, it's okay. Trump derangement uses a force for good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may remember Dr. Redfield as one of the first officials, albeit former officials, to come out saying that a lab leak was the possible origin of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's watch this clip from CNN all the way back in 2021. If I was to guess this virus started transmitting somewhere in September, October in Wuhan. September, October. That's my own view. It's an only opinion. I'm allowed to have opinions now. You know, I am of the point of view that I still think the most likely uh, etiology of this pathogen in Wuhan was a, from a laboratory, uh, you know, escaped. Uh, the other people don't believe that. That's fine. Science will eventually figure it out. It's not unusual for respiratory pathogens that are being worked on in a laboratory to infect the laboratory worker. This was during a time, of course, when the lab leak theory was widely criticized as a conspiracy, as evidenced by this NPR tweet, which is still live on the site. I saw just uh, just now a tweet from Alina Chan, who we've had on many times to talk about the lab leak theory. Uh, as she points out, this is a, a detail I always point to as probably the, the one thing that tipped me most in the direction of thinking it came from a lab. She writes, it did not take years to find the intermediate animal host of SARS-1. It took two months in 2003 after the virus was isolated, essentially as soon as investigators realized they should go check the local animal market. It took less than a week in 2004. Hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Years later. Yeah, that makes me think of the segment we watched uh, where John Stewart was talking to Stephen Colbert <laughs> about lab leak theory, and Stephen Colbert's response to him was, "Okay, but can you tell me why you think it's lab leak theory without any, you know, any background on what the evidence was?" And you're saying that right now. We could have been having a discussion about the facts, the facts that militate toward it being lab leak, the facts that militate toward it being a zoonotic origin, yeah. and we wouldn't be in a position where years after COVID, late night hosts who comb through information because it is their job mm -hmm. are completely naive and ignorant about what even the information is that would help them come to a decision one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And then they had that, uh, and, and then uh, Stephen Colbert says, well, no, no, the lab's there because that's where the bats are. And Justin goes, are you kidding? There's bats <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> the, lab's, <laughs> the lab's there because the <laughs> that's not it. Yeah. yeah. More rising after this. Stay with us.